episode 47. Yep. If you add 4 and 7, it equals 11, which is half of 22. And which is our upcoming listener episode. Should I ask how you are? Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Oh. <laughs> fine. I guess fine. Just trying to be polite, you know? Um, Happy Merry Christmas oh Eve. Oh my gosh, Merry Christmas. A lot of Jews are eating Chinese today. Yeah. Which is something that I will probably also be doing. My family's German, so we celebrate Christmas on the 24th. But okay. then my stepmom's American, so we celebrate Christmas on the 25th. So we do both back to back. That's nice. It's like nice, but like not. But it's fine. I got you. I feel the yeah, same way. We feel it. We get each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well. Guys, we got some really nice things. Uh, Lisa G in Norway, our friend, sent us some chocolates. And sent, and sent Gio, Gio some, some treats. Doggy treats. And it was so kind of her. So thank you. Uh, we got some cards and some mail. Uh, we got these little baby mini plungers. It's my favorite. I can't stop playing with it. But they're little plungers like our plunger for They're it. so freaking cute. They're like phone stands. But they're also just cute little plungers. And they were sent by, um, I'm going to read her Twitter name, at Skilla with three A's. S-K-I-L-L-A-A-A. And then two underscores. <laughs> nice. Okay. Skilla. Thanks, Skilla. <laughs> Uh, she sent these and I only know there wasn't a name on the package, but there was, uh, she tweeted at us about it. So nice. Thank you. They're really fun. We've been playing with them the entire time we've been recording. So thanks. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks. Um, I also want to add that if you are a patron as of today or as of, let's see what's today, December 20th. Okay. You a couple days ago. Yeah, so a couple days ago, you'll be getting something in the mail if you haven't already. We're sending you a little something, but if you haven't, if you're not signed up and you want to sign up now, don't worry. We have more little surprises planned for you. Um, now that we have all your addresses sorted out, I kind of spent all day like organizing everyone's address, mailing address <laughs> <laughs> while I was at work. Yep. <laughs> um, so don't worry, don't fret. We're gonna be like doing more fun little surprises for you guys from now on. Um. Also, you can go see our Friends Miss Unwrapping video on Patreon if you're a $10 plus donator. Donor. Cool. <laughs> you can see what we got each other for Christmas, which was awesome. And what M got Geo for Christmas, which was awesome and horrifying at <laughs> all at once. And M saw the gift that a lot of you helped make, which was the book. It with, was amazing. It's the book with all the Geo, Geo and M illustrations. Y'all are so sneaky. I didn't even know that that was happening at all. I kicked you out of the group. I took a page out of your book and kicked you out of social did media did you block me on everything didn't even notice just facebook didn't even notice. but it but i i know you wouldn't notice even if i didn't block i don't you. i'm not a, an avid facebooker but the point is don't be a grinch oh and don't be <laughs> a scrooge oh right? okay yes that's the point and go watch our video of us unwrapping each other's presents and also do that that was a good time it was a great time and um why do you drink this week Mm, am I drinking for currently or what I'm predicting I'll be drinking for on the 24th? I mean, I feel like it's up to you. Currently, I'm drinking because I have a lot of stuff I need to do before I get home. Mm. Like, I like have to clean the house and clean the car and do laundry and pack. Oh, yeah. Ditto. Um, but in, if it's the 24th, I'm imagining I am stressed about some last minute thing that I have forgotten to do that I'm now panicking and trying to figure out how to do from across the country. <laughs> so something like that. Fab. Standard. <laughs> Why are you drinking? Um, because I decided to join Weight Watchers again. And so I like a lot myself. I haven't had wine in like three days. So I know there's, if you listen Everywhere in the world is a little more silent right now. We're all <laughs> we're all in shock. It was really shocking. Christine today, I got here <laughs> and she was acting normal and I was like, What's wrong? Are you okay? And she was like, <laughs> I am also usually when we record we order food or get like pizza delivered or something. And she was like, Well, I'm not eating. I'm I'm drinking wine for dinner. And I was like No, I said I and had then, some and eggs. Yeah, she was like, I had some eggs today, so I've got enough points to drink some wine. I was like, That's <laughs> not how Weight Watchers is supposed to be done. And I had some chicken breast and some eggs and yeah, some she veggies. Caved. She didn't really cave. No, it's those still are allowed. all zero still points. Allowed. Listen, I got this covered. My point is, I wanted to have a glass of wine while we record, so I budgeted it out. That's fine. But I drink because of it, because I miss it. Um, <laughs> but it's good for me, because I shouldn't be drinking every night. Anyway, so here's the thing, Em. 
Okay. I got to talk to you. I misunderstood what you said. <laughs> We've discussed this. We have. And it's my fault because I wasn't clear enough. But also, let's let everyone else know. Christina and I, when it comes to speaking to each other, like verbally, mm-hmm. um, we're always like, I don't even have to talk to you mm. most of the time because we just so telepathically get each other. Same brain. But when it comes to like talking to each other over the phone, I don't understand what... Like texting, not yeah, like Yeah, through texting. Phone. Yeah. We like don't get each other's texts. Like no. we don't understand what we're saying. For some reason, that's our kryptonite. There's like a complete lack of understanding the other person's tone. We're like, so solid all the time. Until, which is so weird because... Yep. I don't really have that with many people where I just don't know what the fuck you're talking about. We had to have, we had to have some sort of, some issue. Like we're too in sync always. There had to be a falling point. That's our kryptonite, like you said. And, um, so M texted me earlier this week and was like, oh, so for the next episode, which by the way, we're recording three today. Don't even get me started. But (laughs) so M was like, for the next episode, let's have Christmas stories ready. And I was like, oh, like my own stories. And I was like, no and i was like oh sorry like listener stories yeah i'll get those ready and what i heard was hey let's do christmas stories and when you said your own personal stories i thought it meant like you were gonna have like some little anecdote before well i do i did that's what i meant oh okay and then you were like no no like and then i meant like our stories that we're covering and then you're like someone else's stories and i was like oh like listener stories (laughs) like i didn't understand so i thought i meant like collect some listener stories for the listeners episode which comes out january 1st so that's what i attempted to do and then i found out way too late that's not quite it's fine it's you a for effort that's all that matters thanks people are gonna want to listen to us anyway i think well Maybe not. i want to tell we'll you something out. what i do have some personal true crime christmas all stories. right we'll do it let's go do you mind hearing them yeah okay i called my mom on the way home to make sure i had all the facts right perfect because you know they involve renata <laughs> here's the first one which like she gave me details that i didn't even remember there's two christmas stories mm-hmm. both occurred on christmas eve the same christmas eve or different, different christmas, christmas eves? eves okay so in 1994 i think my mom was uh dropping a bunch of toys and clothes and things off at the free store like the um goodwill or whatever mm-hmm. at in our town in Cincinnati and she drove downtown and she had this minivan and she had me and my brother in the back seat in her car seats and she pulls up and they had this service where you pull up and the employees come and like remove like take out the boxes and stuff and you can drive on so you don't need to like get Mm -hmm. out of the truck in the middle of winter so she pulls up and she's like waiting for an employee to come out and this group of men comes and opens the passenger or the both the sides of the doors and um one holds a gun to her (laughs) hip and then the other one climbs in the passenger seat and they basically say give me your money and the thing was my mom was running this restaurant cafe vienna at the time and it was a monday and so she had all the weekend cash on her that she was going to go deposit in the bank she had seven thousand dollars in cash and checks oh shit so she's sitting in the car and they're like, give me your money. And she's looking everywhere for a wall. And she's like, I have it here somewhere. I know I brought it. Like, just hold on. I'll give it to you. And she's crying and crying. And she just keeps searching. And this guy's holding a hip or a gun to her hip. And um, she's probably around 30, 30 at this point, 29, 30. And she's like, it's here somewhere. You can have it. Like, take my wallet. I don't care. Just don't hurt me or my kids. And so they open the back doors. And like my brother and I were sitting back there. And I was like, Mom, what the hell were we doing? Like, I don't remember this. I was probably yeah. like two and a half. Um, and my mom goes, oh, well, your brother was laughing. And he thought it was funny because he didn't know what was going on. And I was like, well, okay. And she goes, and you were just going, <laughs> Mama, nicht weinen, which means, Mama, like, Mom, don't cry. Don't Aww. cry, Mom. <laughs> She's like, she just kept going. And then I kept yelling, I'm not crying. Cause she, like, didn't know what to do. And then. <sighs> I was like, why weren't we crying? And she's like, oh, they were very nice to you guys. Like, they were like, oh, don't worry. Everything's fine. And then we're like, give me your fucking money to my mom. And she's like freaking out. She can't find it. So she tells them like, listen, take the the seats of the minivan. Take whatever you need. Take anything out of it. So they remove the seats of the minivan. Like, With you still in them? No, like the, it was like three rows of oh. seats or whatever. And they like took out the middle like, row or removable something. removable seats. Yeah. And just like took them with them. <laughs> She's like, they're worth like 700 bucks if you sell them, like, 
at the auto store or whatever. Just take them. So they took them. And then she just, like, kind of drove home. And she said it took her, like, five or six years before she could drive back down to, like, drop off money. Oh, and then she got out of the car when she got home. Turns out she had been sitting on the cash the whole time. That's why she couldn't find it. At least she still made $7,000 that weekend. I know, right? And then the other thing was, oh, wait, they took the seats and then all the donations. Like, the whole trunk was full of, like, donations and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. So that's what they took. And then the other one was that I remember more clearly. I was probably about eight years old, and I was we were living in this house. My mom was a single mom, and she was decorating the tree, and I was being a brat, and I was like, I want to go to my friend's house. So I went next door to my friend Celine's house. And she had a friend over and we started talking. I was eight and we started talking about like crime and like ghosts. I mean, it really was like what we ended up doing with our lives. But (laughs) we were talking about like this girl. I remember her and I don't remember her name or anything, but she was like telling me how her mom had this stalker and like just weird shit where I was like, this is creepy and so interesting. And so we were talking about all this creepy stuff. And finally, I was like, I should probably go see what's going on at my mom's house. And I walk over and there's all these police officers. I'm like, what the hell? Apparently, while she was decorating the tree, like minutes after we had left, this guy walks in the back door of our house. And he had a long blonde ponytail, my mom said. And she grabbed a broom and just started like fucking hitting him with a broom. Oh, shit. And he ran out and she chased him down the street. And she was screaming so loudly that Celine's dad, Michael, came out with a gun and they started just, like, chasing this guy down the street. And my mom said she just started screaming so loud that all the dogs started, like, coming out and oh, barking. Oh, shit. And she's like, we, she's like, Michael chased him into, like, the neighbor's backyard and then, like, back on the street. And she's like, and then he just got away. And so I came home and my mom was like, oh, sorry, I'm exhausted. I just, like, chased this guy down the street with a broom. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> so then a week later, I'm on the front porch of our house reading Celine's little sister, Sophia, who's probably, like, four or five years old, maybe. I'm reading her book on the front porch. And we had, like, these hedges that you could sort of see through. They were, like, translucent, mm-hmm. like, you could sort of see. And I see somebody walk past and then kind of just stop. And I'm, like, reading this book. And I'm, like, that person's watching us. And I can't see who it is, but I can, like, see that there's mm-hmm. a figure there. So I'm, like, okay, get ready to run. So I'm reading this book to my to Celine's little sister. And I keep turning the pages. Finally, after a few minutes, the guy keeps walking and he, like, turns to look at us, and he has this long, blonde ponytail. Ugh. Like my mom had freaking described about the guy who broke How in. How the fuck? Why would he come back? I don't know. And he stood there for, like, five minutes. I didn't even run. I just casually, like, really calmly walked in. And I was like, Mom, that guy's fucking out there. And she's like, you are so dramatic. Everyone's so dramatic. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then no one believed me. And then I talked to my mom today. She's like, oh, yeah, that's pretty creepy. I'm like, glad you finally believe me. Uh, uh, anyway, those are my Christmas stories fuck that you weren't asking for but that i gave you but anyway. also i kind of i was asking for them and didn't know i was because those were <laughs> top notch oh uh, my poor mother i can't believe you lived that life that was such a different life that i led it's just so there's just so many i'm i'm so amazed you're alive those are just the christmas ones <laughs> god <laughs> those are just the holiday themes oh good the seasonal stories oh, well thank god I, I i don't know you can have that childhood i don't want it listen clearly i'm a hardened just uh crossing my heart right now yeah yeah yeah. you cats like you oh my yeah on uh the day before i'm jewish and during christmas i'm catholic everyone's like everyone's like what the fuck is M? everyone's like oh a a menorah for em i'm like i doesn't have a menorah i don't but i want that dinosaur one so bad i know you do (laughs) angular cassis 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 cass carrot (laughs) opulent if you aren't familiar with those wine terms congratulations you're just like us and me oh i don't care if wine clubs and critics babble on and on about herbaceousness i just want to know does it taste good luckily i found first leaf the only wine club that's based on your taste i just received my first leaf order and these are some damn good wines so em tell them how it works uh so you can customize your first leaf order by selecting the color wine regions and frequency of your wine shipments They then create an introductory three pack of wine to get you started. With First Leaf's introductory pack, you'll get three bottles of wine for just five bucks each. So normally these bottles go for $20 a piece, and this time you're only getting them for $5 each. So that's a $15 deal. Woohoo! The more wines you rate, the better your recommendations will be. So it's a lot like a Pandora where you slowly build 
your own little repertoire of wine. Mm -hmm. First Leaf eliminates the middleman and works directly with the world's foremost wineries in France, Italy, and Napa Valley. And I'm pretty sure it's your new favorite way to rate and buy quality wine, is it it not? It is indeed my favorite way to rate and buy quality wine. It ships fast, it's delicious, and it is not overpriced. To order your three-pack of introductory wine for only $15, go to tryfirstleaf.com slash drink. That's three bottles of wine for only $15 at tryfirstleaf.com slash drink. Experience First Leaf today at tryfirstleaf.com slash drink. Anyway, let's just do the story. Let's move on. Tell me what's happening. I'm not doing a ghost story. I wanted to do something Christmas themed. You're going to like my story. I'm so excited. And everyone else is going to like my story too because it involves you saying a lot of German. No, thank you. You want to (gasps) guess? It's not Krampus. Yeah. Um... I'm so excited. Are you? I could lose my goddamn mind. How do you say it? Krampus. Krampus. How do you do it? Krampus. It's like in your, th- like. Like you got popcorn in your throat? Like, yeah. Like, Krampus. Yeah, that's pretty good. Krampus. 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 Let's talk about Krampus. Okay. So this is not the story. This is just, this is just an education session for all of us. I mean, I don't even really know much about Krampus at all. Oh, really? Nothing. Because it's not like I learned it as a kid. My parents weren't like. There's this demon. Well, we're going to learn. My dad's parents probably did that to him, but. And that's why Bernhard turned into who he is. I mean. <laughs> With his slag pots and his fake news articles. <laughs> going to be honest. And his marmalades. <laughs> <laughs> Frida's Bakery. Let me tell you, that's exactly why. So Krampus is a half goat, half demon. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Who literally beats children into being nice. <laughs> But we're off to a good start. It's so absurd. He is known as the (laughs) anti-Santa. He's also known as St. Nick's uh, good cop, bad cop duo. Oh, interesting. Um, So he's from pagan traditions, which means he's older than Jesus. Fun fact. He's gotten one up on him. And he is described as, I think he stole the same tagline you have on your Tinder page. Because it says, boozy goat horned menace (laughs) that whips children around Europe. Gonna pee my pants. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Boo- <laughs> can, can you read it again? I'm gonna pee my pants. Can you read it again? <laughs> it's my Tinder profile, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, imagine you're swiping, swiping, swiping. You land on Christine's face. You're swiping left, and then you go, "I'm gonna swipe right." And you're like, "Let's see what this girl has to say." <laughs> Boozy. Goat horned menace that whips children around Europe. I'd swipe right, I think. A boozy menace, indeed. I like that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Okay, come on. Described as um, having horns, dark hair, a long tongue. Apparently, a lot of people referred to him as Kiss. That like long, long oh, tongue. Oh, ew. Fangs, cloven hooves, um, and has a chain, bells, and a bundle of birch sticks and a large wicker basket on his back. He sounds like the devil, but also Little Red Riding Hood. Yes. You know? He sounds like a hangry Little Red Hat Riding Hood. <laughs> it's a Snickers commercial, probably. Yeah, it's Little Red Riding Hood before she has her Snickers. Um, so in this, in this wicker basket that he carries on his back, it is filled to the brim with thorny birch sticks. Jesus. Um, so it's very much in a weird way. Like how Santa, like, if you're good, you get presents. If you're bad, you get coal. Mm. If you're bad, on Krampus's terms, you are whipped <laughs> raw to the edge of death. Listen. But apparently, St. Nick is, like, hanging, like, next to him and, like, watches this happen. And is very much, like, prison mentality of, like, I see everything but know nothing. Like, he's very much, like, what? he's aware of this shit. And he's a saint. Yeah, he's a saint because he, like, he... He's not doing anything that involves punishment. He's just a saint. Like, he's not doing anything Lord. wrong. He just, like, he sees what's happening, but if anyone says anything, he's like, I don't know that guy. Oh, my God. The name is derived from the German name, I'm going to say the Krampen. Krampen? Krampen. You said it right. Meaning claw, correct? Claw? Yeah. yeah. Um, what he the is, fuck? He is also the son of hell <laughs> in Norse mythology. Did it come out your nose? Mm-hmm. Did it feel weird? During what do you mean the son of hell? Like Lucifer, but not? I can't tell because I don't know Norse mythology. You don't? 
Not always. Oh. But so it says son of hell, but hell is with one L. So I don't know if that's a typo and means hell like the place or if hell <laughs> is a person with one L and he's from North mythology. I like you just didn't Google it. You're like, well, I chose to let everyone else choose their own adventure. Sure. Great. So during the 12th century, the Catholic Church actually attempted to like remove Krampus from like society, like, like <laughs> to like just, just ignore the fact that he exists because of his resemblance to the devil. Yeah, it makes sense. And they were like, no, nah, we don't want to. Wait, wanna... this is 20th century? The 12th century. Oh, 12th. Yeah. I was like, yeah, 20th century. Like the, like... like the 1100s. They were already like, this is too much. They were like, in the 1100s, this is too much. Like, we're literally pulling people's limbs apart with, with <laughs> wheels. But, yeah. you know, our children shouldn't be seeing this horned person. Exactly. Since the 17th century, Hemen, like I said, Hemen, Santa, or not really Santa, St. Nicholas, mm. um, have been like... It's like his, like, dark companion. You know what I mean? Like, his after-hours buddy that he doesn't, um, like, bring home to mom. Oh, my. Okay, so they do, like, the, the... One article I read was, like, yin and yang. Oh, interesting. So, like, they're both... They're one of the same. They're, like, in the dark. Cut from the same cloth, but different fabric. Interesting. Um. So, Krampus delivers... Apparently, this is, like, another thing that he does. He um, delivers to children... Um, birch sticks that are painted in gold <laughs> cool and like they're the birch sticks are small cut down versions of the twigs that he uses to beat bad children with but you're the kids are supposed to hang the gold painted birch sticks on their like as a decoration in their house to like remind them over the year to like be good or else like bigger non-gold painted versions of these are gonna beat you up oh so it's like elf on the shelf but like yeah it's like elf on the shelf but sticks but like on bird, the wall birch stick on the i can only think of dick yeah me too <laughs> stick on the dick <laughs> um, birch on the church cool sure according to um i guess you know how in like the 1800s postcards were a big thing what we all knew you know i remember that yeah who doesn't in a series of 1800s postcards krampus is heavily used in art for the postcards okay and um they would have him doing different things to children including ripping out their pigtails uh! um leading children off of cliffs what i don't know what this means but sadistic ear pulling <gasps> And putting preteens in shackles, forcing children to beg for mercy, and hauling kids to something called the Lake of Fire. He also drowns children to death in ink and then uses his pitchfork to p fish them out. In ink? Yep. The fuck? I thought you were going to say he uses his pitchfork to, like, draw a pretty picture. <laughs> no. He just, like, puts them in ink and then fishes them out for Like his reason. pitchfork is a giant piece of calligraphy stenciling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in the 1930s in Austria... Krampus was seen as a symbol of sin, but not before that, I guess. <laughs> um, so actually, this was like a big thing, though. In the 1930s in that area, he was seen as being the poster child for socialists. Wait, poster child for social? Wait, okay, say it again. Like, a lot of people uh, hated Krampus and associated him with socialists. Oh, in why? That doesn't make any he, sense. Because he had anti-Christian ideals and socialist values. I How don't. on earth? He's just like beating the shit out of people and putting them in ink with his pitchfork. That's not socialist values. Look, I'm Listen. just, I'm just, I'm just handing you the news. All right, hand me the news. Um, the Austrian Catholic Union also tried to boycott Krampus because he was becoming super commercialized. I guarantee you my grandma was in that group, whatever that was. <laughs> the I, I Austrian can, Catholic Union. I mean, I can almost a thousand percent guarantee you. Well, anyway, the government forbade Krampus celebrations because people also celebrate this guy. In 1953... Uh, That's the year my dad was born. Oh, good. Well, the kindergarten system in Vienna uh, started passing out this pamphlet for new students to give to their parents called Krampus is an Evil Man. And uh, it warned parents that they should not talk about Krampus in their home because it would permanently scar their children. Well, I mean, that's not wrong. That's true. But also, like... Just How out of many, context, that's not. It's right. just such a weird, like that's the pamphlet you're gonna offer people. Like, 
Can you, you imagine today people like handing out well, a pamphlet about like SpongeBob or some no, shit but like did that? You, they do, and Harry Potter. Did you see the one? Oh, that, I remember the Harry Potter thing. Did you see the one that someone recently posted in the Facebook group on mm-hmm. and That's Why I Drink? Somebody saw a pamphlet that was about atheists, and it was like, do not approach them directly. Contact your nearest <laughs> it's pastor. It's like the gays. I'm serious. It was like, contact your nearest pastor or your nearest religious official. Do not approach them. They may like attack you no but like infiltrate your mind or like oh all jesus shit. christ but it was like so and it was written in fucking like curls mt or some shit of course and i'm reading this like this is the shit you're talking about but like in 21st century it's gross it's for like kids like contact your nearest pastor Ugh. Okay. anyway go on so uh apparently he also became known as a sex demon by the 1960s oh no um by the, of course, in the fucking 1960s. The summer of a, love. Krampus was there. Everything was a 60s, <laughs> sex demon in the 1960s. Um, apparently, he was known in a lot of artwork during the time to be involved in BDSM. And, uh, I mean, someone in an article I read said, which isn't too surprising given his history of spanking young girls with whips. Not There's nothing wrong with BDSM, but it's not a far association that if this guy uses whips and stuff like that and then in the 60s when everyone's like super sexually active and open of course like they are gonna find a way to throw some free love some stuff into that but see at the same time it's like a pedophile you know what i mean it's like mm, yeah because he's associated with children. children that's not the same as bdsm not at all so december 6th it's not like christmas that krampus shows up but it's december 6th that's saint nicholas day is saint nicholas day which is known as Niklaus dog. Niklaus dog. Okay. Um, <laughs> when children, I guess, is this a thing where they look out their door and see if their shoe has presents on it? Yeah. Okay. You didn't do that growing up? No, Christine. A I went to pe- a stocking. A lot of people I know, maybe it's just Catholics, but a lot of people oh. I know do that where like we would put our boot out and then St. Nicholas on the 6th would come and put presents in our shoes. Like, Nope. Never heard of that. Are you kidding me? Nope. <laughs> i have no idea what you're talking about like they put like clementines and candies and things in your shoe all nope. right i missed that train you so missed out is what you did but so the night before that december 5th is when apparently krampus is supposed to uh, come. corrupt so the idea is that if you're a bad kid then you've been whipped to pieces by the time <sighs> december 6th rolls around and santa or saint nick will see you and know whether or not you were a good or bad kid and leave certain We'll leave presents in certain kids' shoes. Is this an excuse for parents to beat their kids? Like, I don't understand. Like, what do you I mean? I didn't walk into this thinking that would be what this is, but it sounds a lot like it. I mean, what? You're you're just happen to be whipped on the 6th by some mysterious mythical figure? Oh, it gets worse. So, Great. it's called Krampus Knocked. Mm-hmm. So, that's what the celebration is now for Krampus. Sure. Where it involves a lot of drunk people. Sure. And they dress as the devil, <laughs> and they chase people through the streets and into their homes. Fantastic. And then follow them into the homes. No, that's not okay. So basically, instead of this idea of Krampus running through the streets and beating all of the naughty kids, this is now a celebration where people like dress up as Krampus and do the biddings for him, and not they don't actually hurt anyone, but the goal is to terrorize and frighten children so people will truly dress up as satan with pitchforks and then chase them into their houses and then like the parents are so chill with this like they expect it and like literally open the door for them to come in into the kids room and like scream and terrify them what and then before they leave um the parents will give them alcohol so they get drunk (laughs) It's literally like a very fucking weird pub crawl, but also like shitty daycare. Welcome to Germany. <laughs> it's like a like terrorize my kid and I'll get you good and drunk so you can terrorize the other kid even more. And somehow they have a better education system, healthcare system. Maybe because they let shit like this system? happen. I don't know. I don't know what the secret is. So they'll be in full Satan regalia and parents will let them into the house they'll torment kids and then give them drinks before they go on to the next house <laughs> that's really all i have for krampus but satan regalia <laughs> I'm sorry, i mean doesn't everyone have a pair in their so con- absurd so while i was looking into this right um i was like what are some other like fucking gnarly german christmas oh, folklore don't do this so i'm gonna do it tell me 
So there's one girl. There's a couple that I just want to throw in, but then it gets it gets good. So there's one girl named Frau per- Perchta. Does that strike a fancy with you? She was a witch in Germanic folklore. Never heard of her. Germanic? Or no, I think she might have been Icelandic. Oh, shit. That's very different. <laughs> folklore. But Christmas time. Uh, she's a witch who hands out like presents and punishments. What? During the 12 days of Christmas. Oh, like which, tricks and treats? Yeah. But, like, it starts on Christmas Day. So the 12 uh, days of Christmas are actually, like, December 25th through the next 12 days. To the Annunciation. And if you're bad, like, the tricks, the treats are that you get candy. Sure. The trick is, if you're bad, she will rip out your internal organs and replace them <laughs> with garbage. Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. She replaces it with garbage? <laughs> yeah. As, like, a metaphor for your organs are garbage and not worth your time because you're a horrible person. What a fucking bitch. Imagine being like, your liver is no good. Take an old can and some <laughs> potato chips. I'm going to shove this old kale up in your liver. <laughs> what the actual hell? So that's Frau. What a bitch. Then there's Hans Trapp. Well, that sounds fucking German. He's also another anti-Santa. Good. Who hands out, um, he's from France folklore. And he, uh, basically it says that he was a real man. Like, this is a story of a real man. Who was super greedy and rich, but he worshipped Satan, so he was excommunicated from his church. And okay. he was exiled into the forest where he preyed upon children that got lost in the woods by disguising himself as a scarecrow by putting like a bunch of straw in his clothing. Oh my god. And then he would chase them. Imagine seeing a scarecrow no. in the forest and then just no. starts fucking chasing him. No. Him. And then he would uh he one time he tried to eat a boy that he captured, but he got struck by lightning and died. He tried to eat a boy that he captured. That's got- how he was surviving out in the forest. He would just eat kids. That, Raw kids? I guess so. Just started, just started it at the fucking finger. Got his way up to the elbow. That's disgusting. <laughs> um, Wait, this was a French folklore? It sounds yeah. like a very German name. <laughs> so anyway, he now apparently still visits young kids before Christmas dressed as a scarecrow to remind them to be on their best behavior. I'm going to eat you. Or I'm going to eat you. That's fucked up. Then another French legend. His name is Père Foutard. That sounds much more French. It means Father Whipper. Oh, good. Um, He was an evil butcher Mm -hmm. who would eat children, just like the scarecrow. Sure. Um, And he lured three boys into his own butcher shop where he killed and chopped them up and salted them before eating them. (laughs) You gotta. Because you gotta cure the meat. You gotta season it. Um... And right before he could actually eat the meat, he's already killed them. So, like, what's the point? Might as well eat them at this fucking I point. Mean, yeah. St. Nicholas walks on through. Uh-oh. Resurrects the boys to life. Like- and then he took the butcher custody. What do you mean? That's all I know. What? He put him in his bag? I, like, is he a cop now? He put him in his... Like, Detective Nicholas? Yeah, like, handcuffs? I don't know. All I know is that was fucking weird and I want to talk about it. Let's talk about it. That's well, that was it. wild. Yes. Okay, good. That's all I have to say. The last one I have to say is Icelandic. Great. And I feel like Iceland has some weird shit too. Like Germans have weird shit, but I feel like Iceland has some weird shit too. Oh, get ready to, for some examples. Great. So I don't know how I'm doing this. I don't know how to pronounce them. I'm sorry if you're Icelandic. I'm going to say it wrong, I but mean, I'm trying my best. I feel best. like everyone knows Americans don't know how to speak, pronounce Icelandic terminology. I can barely say Icelandic. So this girl, her name is Grilla. Mm-hmm. And she is an ogress. Oh, sure. And she kidnaps, cooks, and eats children who don't obey their parents. A lot of children eating. She kidnaps, cooks? And eats the children that are bad. The children of the cooks? Or, like, it's a totally separate thing? No, she doesn't kidnap chefs. She kidnaps, comma, cooks, comma, eats children. (laughs) What a specific serial kidnapper. (laughs) I I only kidnap the finest restaurateurs. I thought you meant she kidnaps cooks and then also eats children. She kidnaps cooks and then she uh, eats the bartenders. (laughs) I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) That would be weird. She kidnaps, That's Icelandic. (laughs) Hashtag Iceland. She kidnaps and cooks and eats children who don't obey their parents. Okay. She had three different husbands and 72 children. 72. All who were causing trouble, which ranged from harmless mischief to murder. She oh. had 300 heads, three eyes <laughs> on each head, which makes 900 eyes, by the way. 
<laughs> she had bad nails. I don't know what fucking diva said wrote that description, but she has bad nails. Listen, gotta get those cuticles oiled. Her ears dangled down to her shoulders and are fastened to her nose. Wait. I said it. I'm just gonna. Go. And then her chin is bearded and her teeth are made of charcoal. You know, so like what you look like. I'm and really s- sensing myself in this, <laughs> in this woman. <laughs> yes. So she is apparently such a troublemaker that the onion in 2010 blamed her for an Icelandic volcano that erupted. <laughs> oh my God. Fun fact. <laughs> so she is also the Yule Lad's mother. Who are the Yule Lads, you say? I say it again and again. Of her 72 children, there were 13 of them, which made this little gang called the Yule Lads, or Yolasvinjar. Oh, so it's pretty damn good to me. They were 13 Icelandic trolls. Sure. That she mothered. And in ancient times, they used to steal things and cause trouble around Christmas time. So they were used basically to scare children like everyone mm. else. Um, over time, they became kinder in folklore. So now... um, like they like give presents or not like now all of a sudden oh, they like turned elves they've, sort of they've turned into elves mm. but originally they were trolls where each one was more terrible than the next great um so 13 days before christmas eve children put their shoes out on windowsills and if they're good they get treats um but if you are not good then the yule lads instead of giving you treats this is in nowadays where they're kinder if you don't get treats, they will leave potatoes in your shoes. And I'd rather honestly have fucking potatoes. <laughs> like, can you imagine like waking up and there's like fresh mashed potatoes? Like, ooh. I will tell you, Celine and I used to take potatoes from my mom's groceries and walk around the neighborhood and hide potatoes in people's belongings. Because you were part of the Yule Lads? I were mean, you trying to be recruited? Maybe we were. It's like an initiation. But like we just thought it was really funny. <laughs> well. You know what? Maybe you did it just so you could tell that story one day on your podcast. If you live in Cincinnati and you found a potato in your belongings one day or your <laughs> mailbox, I'm sorry. So, um, I just want to read off the the names of the Yule Lads Please and do. who they are because I really think that this is me trying to create characters about my personality. Tell me. Because they're all kind of the exact same personality. Wait, is it like sleepy, sneezy, like from yes Snow except they're White. all different levels of hungry i think <laughs> so if there was ever a missing dwarf <laughs> the eighth one's name was hungry and oh it was me God. and then tried to write about 13 different people but accidentally wrote about the same person 13 <laughs> times so apparently each of the 13 trolls or the yule lads they each one gets a different day so like how it's like 13 days before christmas there's like presents or potatoes in your shoes each day up until christmas a different yule lad is causing mischief in your house gotcha so on december 12th which is the first night is gimpy sure also they have icelandic names but these are the american names that they've gotten great gimpy is known for harassing sheep so that he can have milk (laughs) but apparently he also has peg legs and it impairs him from chasing the sheep (laughs) whoops um, on December 13th comes Gully Gawk, who hides in gullies to sneak into cow sheds and also steal milk. Oh my. See how so far there's no originality? They just like dairy. <laughs> on the 14th comes Stubby, who I don't know how he does not have peg legs, but, but apparently yeah. for he's known for his short size and tendency to steal pans to eat any leftovers. <laughs> so they're literally just hungry. Literally all of them are just hungry for different things. <laughs> On the 15th is, I'm not kidding you, their name is Spoon Licker. No. Who is known for being extremely thin and stealing spoons to lick any remaining food off. Then there's Pot Scraper. We can only fucking imagine what he's doing. <laughs> to steal leftovers from pots because one of them was already stealing from pans and one was stealing from spoons. One was stealing from cows and one was stealing from sheep. Sure. All for food. Then there's Bowl Licker. Bowl Licker? Who hides under beds until someone puts their bowl down so he can steal it. Imagine if you were growing up and you're like, there's a monster under my bed. And they're like, no, it's just bowl liquor. He just wants your leftovers. <laughs> it's like, that's called a dog. Just don't finish your cereal. <laughs> just leave some for bowl liquor. <laughs> then on the 18th comes Door Slammer. Oh my. Who I think is the black sheep of the family. Sounds like Because it. he likes to slam doors just to scare people while they're sleeping. Then there's, on the 19th, there's one who craves a an icelandic food similar to yogurt and will steal it from people Mm -hmm. 
On the 20th, there's someone, kid you not, named Sausage Swiper. <laughs> Who locks Swiper, no swiping. He likes to hide in the rafters and steal sausages that are being smoked. Then there's Window Peeper on the 21st, who is known to look into windows to search for food to steal. Then there's Doorway Sniffer, who has an abnormally large nose to sniff out bread. Then on the 23rd is Meat Hook. Can you imagine what he likes to steal? Meat. Then there's Candle Stealer, who follows children to steal their candles so he can use them to find food. So wait, so he has an extra step added in. <laughs> Literally, the only one that's not like anyone is fucking door slammer. He's just like, I just want to make loud noise. He's like, look, everyone else is clearly eating all the fucking food. I got nothing else to do. Oh my god! So each of the Yule lads continues their mischief for a total of thirteen days before retreating back to their Yule lad cave. Then there is the Yule cat, which belongs in the same family. He was their pet, and he's bigger than a house. He <gasps> eats bad kids. And those who finish all, I guess there's um, a tradition in Iceland that um, if you finish all your work on time, like, it's very much like if you're a good kid, then you get gifts. But they have a rule of, like, like an old-fashioned rule where if you didn't finish your work on time, then you wouldn't receive clothes for Christmas. Oh, my. And so the Yule Cat is able to see who he's supposed to attack, but based on if you're wearing old, dingy clothes or new clothes because you worked hard for them. God. And so anyone who's lazy and not wearing new clothes on, by Christmas, they would be sacrificed to the Yule Cat who will eat them. What the fuck? Anyway. It started as Krampus and turned into something really fucking weird. I'm just weird. like, my mind is... So there's like Snow White and the 13 really fucking hungry dwarves. <laughs> the hangry dwarves. <laughs> Holy crap. We started with a hangry little red riding hood and ended with a hangry... Angry 13 little trolls. Burps. <laughs> Holy crap. I don't even... I didn't know any of that, honestly. The hangry folklore is, I guess, how we should just put that. Christmas is coming up, and that means... Well, Christmas is tomorrow. Uh Uh-oh. It's Christmas time. (laughs) Hello, Christmas! It's Christmas time, and that means family gatherings, seeing beloved friends and family, and another year of celebrating your family's unique traditions. It's the best time of year to indulge in remembering the past, but also for making new memories that you'll all cherish for years to come. And more than ever, that also means tons of great pictures. Pictures of your family gathered together, pictures of those adorable little ones running around and playing, pictures of the annual tradition of baking holiday cookies with your children. With all those great pictures and fantastic memories, this year we've partnered with canvaspeople.com to bring you a special deal. For those of you who don't know, canvaspeople.com has a very easy to use photo to canvas service that takes your favorite photo memories and turns them into beautiful artwork for you to enjoy every day. Instead of snapping that beautiful photo and letting it rot in your cell phone, womp womp. you can bring the photo to life to put on your walls at your at home in your office or to give as a great gift on someone's mantelpiece. On my mantel. On someone's vision board. <laughs> Mine. You can buy with confidence knowing that over a million happy customers have worked with Canvas People before, and they have gotten high-quality Canvas made in the U.S., which has contributed to 250 and more manufacturing jobs with fast shipping and great attention to detail. Uh, normally, an 11 by 14 Canvas is priced at $69.99, but for a limited time, Canvas People is offering one free 11 by 14 Canvas. Just pay shipping. Again, that is one free 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 Free. 11 by 14 canvas for a limited time and to get this amazing deal all you have to do is go to canvaspeople.com and enter drink in the card at checkout that's canvaspeople.com promo code drink Drink. all right i have a story for you okay this is about tamara sansonova aka the granny ripper the granny ripper yep interesting this is a newly developing story oh shit yes oh shit so, Tamara Sansonova was born in St. Petersburg, Russia on February 5th, 1947. She studied English and German at, Mos- at Moscow State Linguistic University, and her records show that she had a history of mental illness, having been admitted to psychiatric hospitals on three separate occasions. She claimed she was ill and couldn't work, so she made her money by renting out a room in her apartment. Her neighbor of 15 years, Maria Kravenko, Uh, recalled her regularly walking out of the house barefoot in a nightgown, even in winter. She would go and buy food, and when the neighbors asked why, she would say, I like to eat at night. (laughs) Okay. Which, like... Said all 13 of those fucking trolls. (laughs) Me too, and the trolls. (laughs) (laughs) Said everyone but Door Slammer. (laughs) (laughs) Door Slammer's like, damn it. (laughs) She was convinced people were coming into her apartment while she was out, like, buying food in the middle of the night. And she was convinced they would come in and cut up all her clothes. 
But when her neighbor Kravenko suggested she call the police, she panicked and said, well, they can't do anything for me and stop talking about it. So Kravenko, the neighbor, also revealed that Samsonova had borrowed a handsaw from her 10 years earlier but never returned it. (gasps) I know what the saw is for. In July of 2015, a 63-year-old woman named Natalia Vasilyevna called the police. Her friend, Valentina Ulanova, had taken Tamara in for a while so that Tamara could serve as her caregiver. So basically, she had a friend who needed a caregiver, and Tamara Mm -hmm. came to her apartment to, like, live with her to take care of her. But Natalia didn't see her friend Valentina for a while and tried calling her apartment, but the mobile phone and the landline were both disconnected. She asked Tamara what could have happened, but Tamara said there was no need to call the police, and she just wanted to keep living there. So then she said her heart sank. She asked Tamara if she thought Valentina was dead, and she told a weird story, quote, about getting up to make tea at 2 a.m. and finding Valentina unconscious with drink, unconscious with drink, in the corridor. But she went away. (laughs) That's you after every Friday night. That's me, and this is you. Unconscious with drink. This is you. But she went away to drink her tea. Yep. And when she came... (laughs) (laughs) I sound like a real badass. And when she came back, Valentina was gone. Oh, my. On July 28, 2015, 68-year-old Tamara Sansonova was apprehended while carrying a large pot out of her apartment. In it, police found the boiled head and severed hands of her friend, 79-year-old Valentina Villanova. Hmm. I don't like that. When police arrived, Sansonova admitted to killing Valentina as well (laughs) as three others. Oh, no. During questioning, she said she and Villanova had argued over unwashed cups. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> right i mean if i've ever argued about an unwashed cup i'm about to kill <laughs> you get that switchblade out with my new roommate if he leaves a cup unwashed he's done done so door now <laughs> she had then sedated the older woman with 50 sleeping pills that she had put into her salad 50 that's child's play get on my level she explained to the detectives that uh that she liked it very much her salad <laughs> I wonder if she's like, ah, oh, I love this salad. It's like so just, good. Just slowly nodding off as it's Ooh. happening. She's Damn, 50? That's, like, no 50. pun intended, overkill. Yeah, she literally, she Like, two would have done the trick. Giant bottle of pills and put them all in her salad. She said she woke up after 2 a.m. and then found her roommate lying on the floor, so she began to cut her into pieces, <gasps> allegedly while she was still alive. <gasps> She used a hacksaw that she had borrowed from her neighbors years before. Oh, my God. Remember the hacksaw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. She boiled her head. The whole thing? Yep. She just chopped. Hair she's, and all. She beheaded her. Uh. Put her head in a giant. There's photos on the internet. <gasps> CCTV footage of her carrying a giant stock pot down the stairs of her apartment building. And, it and there was definitely a head in it? The boiled head. And um, that's when she was caught because her neighbor, or her friend was like, my friend's missing. And I don't know who she is. Um, there are also photos where she is reenacting for police how she is behe- how she beheaded Valentina. And reenacting? Yeah, I watched watched it. Okay, but wait, where is it in case people like me want to see it? Just Google this. Okay, <laughs> it was on CNN, but All it right. was it was um, uh, Tamara Sansonova. Google like reenacting. Got it. We'll figure it out. Murder, be a heading. We've all Googled Whatever something. you want. Yeah. But she basically, it's creepy. There are photos on Daily Mail where she's like, she's like, okay, I hold the knife like this. And then there's like a dummy of like a cute, oh. like a woman, a dummy of a woman. And she's like, and then I put the like uh, hacksaw here. And she's just like happily bragging about it. Like yeah, she's, she's, well, she's just explaining what she did. Um. She made seven trips to carry the body parts outside to get rid of them because she said she was way too heavy to carry at once down the stairs. Right. She's a dead fucking body. Right. (laughs) Uh, Throwback. (laughs) Throwback. (laughs) Dead fucking body (laughs) 2.0. There are two photos where she's re- I already said that. When police searched her home, they found several bizarre diaries written in German, English, and Russian. The diaries hinted at more than 10 murders. Oh, shit. One excerpt reads, quote, I killed my tenant, Volodya, cut him to pieces in the bathroom with a knife, put the pieces of his body in plastic bags, 
and threw them away in the different parts of the Frunzensky district. Oh, shit. Then there were other parts of the diary that just said, quote, I woke up at 5 a.m. I'm drinking coffee. Then I'll do work around the house. So it was, like, weird. Like, it's totally, like, like mm-hmm. just... I don't even know how you would say it. Just like totally negligent of like, just like day doesn't to even day. like so passive and carefree about yes. what's happening. Like no yes. guilt or remorse or Nothing. anything. It was very carefree, very day to day activities. Um, that same en- journal entry went on to reveal that she went out to buy marshmallows. Oh, right. Well, why wouldn't you in the midst of your coffee and killing? Listen, you got to tell people, you got to remind your future self. <laughs> um, They also found books on astrology and black magic among her belongings and found a sharp knife and blood smears in the bathroom. Uh, This is a pretty recent case, so investigators are currently trying to put together all the pieces. She's currently being investigated in connection to a total of 14 murders over a period of 20 years. They have already linked her to a male torso. Oh, your favorite. I fucking hate torsos. Also, let's put it out there. Yes, everyone, I've seen that link about the all of the missing the feet across feet. the world. God damn. It's disgusting. I've seen it every single time someone sends me the link. I have to reopen it. So I've seen that article like a hundred times. And I, as someone who hates disembodied feet, I've seen about 50 My people's worth of feet. favorite is when people send it to me and go, I'm not going to send this to them directly. <laughs> here it is and i'm like well i don't want it <laughs> like thanks yeah um okay so they've already linked her to a male torso found on her street 12 years ago via a business card that was found in her apartment Yeesh. that ended up being the same guy who was found dead on her street 12 Ugh. years ago um her husband was reported missing in 2005 and is one of the victims she boasted about murdering in her diary Oh, no. Uh, He's never been found. Blood belonging to one of her lodgers, because she rented out her room. Right. Uh, His name was Sergei Potvayan, and he was... uh, Blood of his was reportedly found in her bathroom. And an old school friend named Anna Batalina also claimed that Sansonova admitted to killing her mother-in-law and once threatened to kill Anna and cut her into pieces. Oh, my. When she got angry. Shit. Um, so when Sansonova first arrived in court, she blew kisses at reporters and played peekaboo, which there are also <sighs> pictures of that where she has her hands like this and no. then covers her face and then goes like this. It's so creepy. She's like behind bars. It's, ugh. it's, it's really fucking, Vomitous. fucking creepy. Um, she cheered when they told her she would remain in custody. What is this girl's problem? It's also believed she may have eaten her victim's body parts as well. But yeah, when you're that loony, of course. As she reportedly claimed she had a liking for cutting out internal organs and eating them. And And not replacing them with garbage? She sounds like that lady. (laughs) Sounds like Frau. Oh my god, Frau. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. Uh, She said her lungs were the favorite part. Police have also not ruled out occult sacrifice as a motive. Which I found interesting. I do find that interesting. Um, It's believed that she might be a sufferer of schizophrenia for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Uh, During the trial, she told reporters through the bars of her courtroom cage, I'm haunted by a maniac upstairs who forced me to kill. Oh, okay. And that is the story of Tamara Sansonova, the granny ripper of (sighs) St. Petersburg, Russia. That's crazy. Creepy crazy creepy that was short sorry that's all. no that was short but sweet that's all i got for you probably like the lungs ew i don't know short but what the fuck didn't you what was the the guy who went did a full interview yeah, about yeah, his body yeah, yeah. he said he, the the higher up you get on a body the sweeter it is yeah 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 lungs are pretty high up there they're in the middle but his favorite part was the tongue Ugh. listen that's so fucked up that's so wild that that guy's business card is the reason that... I know. Like, you never buy a business card and think, this is going to be the thing that well, cops identify me as. You know what I mean? Like, you don't ever, like, have something on you thinking... Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, this is going to be what identifies me to the cops when I'm dead. Right, you're right. It's just wild that, like, they found his torso literally with that, like, disembodied body... 
And then they were like, oh, we have no idea. 12 years. They only figured it out 12 years later when they got to search her apartment. That's crazy. They would never have known otherwise. Like, That's crazy. I watched, um, today I watched live PD or live, basically cops. They're all like cops. I love cops. But it's more intense. Like you're allowed to see like Ooh. blood and shit like that. Like crimes, like real crime scenes. And what channel is this on? Uh, I want to watch I don't know. this. I don't know. It was on at, at work during lunch. Which was a weird time to watch it because I was eating and yeah, I was looking yeah. at a lot of blood. They used to do that on my old, uh, in my old um, PI job. Yeah, but what was the, what's the the break room? They always play yeah. like those fucking murder. I feel shows. like it's a, it's appropriate at a PI job. Maybe, maybe. But like, oh my god, live PD! Yeah. Holy shit! It has ninety one percent. Yeah, it was a really good show. Oh, it's on A and E. A and E. I wrote an article for them once. Go check it out. So they, but in the episode I watched today, the guys started um the guys started to smell like a dead body in the house so it got reported by a neighbor who was like the house smells like a dead body and then like it was live cam shit so like you we saw like the guy the cop going into the house for the first time yeah. and so we saw what he saw and there was absolutely a <gasps> dead body covered in blood <gasps> covered in blood like in the kitchen and in the um in like the laundry room and everything like that and there he had a roommate and the roommate was home and they like arrested him immediately like because apparently because why are you here because the body had been dead for like five days oh my and then God. The, the i felt so bad because the guy the roommate ended up getting released and i felt so bad for him because one he doesn't have a sense of smell so he didn't know no! he couldn't smell a dead body and then he was like not actually a roommate he was like an airbnb person no are you fucking and kidding so me? the room he was staying in had a bathroom and it was literally the first thing next to the front door so like you open the front door and you go right into the room and so he was like in his room and his bathroom is attached to it and so he whenever he left the house he literally just had to like go a foot towards the Holy front door shit and so you know never, in an airbnb went, you try to avoid anybody yeah so like, he never went past the hallway which is where like the like it was just blood 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 <gasps> blood like it looked like a true fucking crime scene and he was living in the house for like five days and had no idea holy shit can yeah. you imagine the police just bursting in and being like and being like there's a dead body in the house you're and under arrest and it's been there for a week and he was like i can't smell i don't it's not my fault holy shit and they found out it wasn't him because apparently they wanted to see if it was like blunt force trauma or something and he died from like some sort of like body like some sort of internal medical thing Jeez. but also like how do you bleed that much i think it was something like he fell on something that was like electric like he fell on like what the fuck like it ended up looking like a crime scene because he might have like just had a heart attack but he happened to fall onto like the um like a like, glass table no like a like a blender or like the the trash it, like the what? disposal yeah the trash well, disposal his whole body just fell into the like disposal. something something weird and gnarly happened but it looked like he got shot because there was blood all over the place that's a fucking disgusting anyway merry christmas guys happy holidays <laughs> this is your spe i hope you're with your family and saying right now see I'm mom sorry. and dad <laughs> see mom and dad i told you this would be a good show see mom and dad we are well adjusted in this generation see we can bond over really fun happy things anyway guys merry christmas happy hanukkah and well and and good luck Good. Listen, going on. listen, we know it's rough. Hopefully Krampus and the Iceland trolls don't get you. I mean, maybe like that's for the best. Or maybe like the hungry ones do. Maybe like they can bring you some meat or spoons or whatever the hell they do. Yep. All right. We love you guys. And that's why we drink. And that's why we drink.